Hi there, I'm Stephen T. Lowade, Visual C++ Libraries Developer, and welcome back to Core C++ Part 7. Uh, in this part, I'll be covering the usual arithmetic conversions in C++, uh, which are a source of a great pain and misery uh, every once in a while. Um, but in addition, I'll also be uh, showing a bit of template metaprogramming uh, for people who like uh, very high level rather than low level things uh, in the core language. I'll also be going through a bit of our STL implementation, uh, as well as uh, a current build that I've got on my machine uh, that has not yet been released. It's got some interesting things. Um, so the usual arithmetic conversions, uh, let me put those off to the side here. Um, let me start by how um, I came to uh, explore this area deeply recently. Um, uh, there was a bug in the STL. Um, our STL implementation is extremely uh, high quality, um, and it also tries to be extremely fast. And sometimes these are in conflict. Um, implementing optimizations, um, if they're not done with extreme care, um, can actually introduce uh, subtle correctness bugs. And this one had actually uh, been around for a while, um, many years in fact, uh, until uh, users reported it um, and we were able to fix it um, in our current builds. So what does the bug look like? Well, let's look at the algorithm uh, library in the STL. Uh, we've got std find over here. Um, I'm just using the STL as a motivating example, uh, even though uh, this uh, series is about the core language. Uh, so std find is very simple. Um, it goes through a range of iterators, but they can be raw pointers. And actually, in this example, I will be using raw pointers. Um, and it says, OK, for every element in the range from first to last, um, is there one that is equal to some specified value? Um, and if there is, then return an iterator or a pointer, um, if we're working with raw pointers, uh, to this element. So this is specified just in terms of equality. Very, very simple. Uh, so let's look at a program. Here I've actually contrived this program to uh, trigger the bug. Fortunately, the bug was uh, quite, uh, quite difficult to trigger because uh, it relied on a certain set of circumstances properly aligning. Um, so here I'm including all the headers I need. Um, I'm also printing out my compiler version um, to make sure I don't get confused when I switch between uh, VC11 RTM here uh, and my current build. Um, of the Milan uh, compiler plus libraries. So I'd love to be able to just construct a vector from an initializer list, but we didn't have that in VC11. Um, so I'm going to have a vector of signed care. This is a signed 8-bit type. Um, and I'm just going to push back 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. Then to trigger the bug, I am going to get pointers to const signed cares. I can use the C++11 member function data to get a pointer to the first element of the vector, which is contiguous. And then if I say vData plus vSize, I'll get a pointer to the end of the vector, one past the end as usual. And then I'm going to call stdfind from the algorithm header uh, with first and last. I'm just going to look for the value 33, which is conveniently right here at index 0, 1, 2. So I would expect to see, um, if I subtract the first iterator, the index 2 printed. So let's try compiling this with VC11 RTM here. Um, this font is small, but this is not the especially interesting one. Um, so if I run my kitty program here, it prints out VC11 RTM's version, and I get 2, as expected. You can try uh, this out for yourself, and you'll see uh, exactly what I'm seeing here. So this is very close to triggering the bug. Let's look at the bug here. So imagine in here I've got something like, actually, let's stomp over this value. Let's suppose I've got a negative 1. This is a vector of signed care, which can represent negative 128 through 127 inclusive. So negative 1 is totally legitimate. And let's actually search for negative 1. Okay. So this should find index 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's save and compile this. And if I compile and run, I get index 3 printed as expected. Now, let's suppose I search for some bogus value like the number 255. Okay, let's go back to the specification of find. Find takes these input iterators, in this case it's pointers to signed cares, and it takes a T value of a possibly different type. And it's just supposed to search for the expression element equal equal value. So we know, uh, I don't even need to write an example, that if I have a signed care equal to negative one, and I try to compare that uh, with equality, uh, to just the integer 255 here, this is of type int, that's going to be false because negative 1, the signed care, is not equal to 255. So this find should not find it in the range. I should get the index 5 reported, uh, which is one past the end of my five element vector. 
But with VC11 RTM, let me save this here. Searching for negative one. No, nope, this is not the window that I want. Here we go. Let me compile and run. Instead of getting the index 5, I'm getting the index 3. This says that I found the number 255, and by the way, it's this negative 1. So apparently, C++, uh, our C++ standard library implementation believes that negative 1 signed care is equal to 255 int. That's false. Um, so this is bad. This is actually kind of bad, because this is a runtime uh, correctness problem. Um, of the bugs we have in the STL, usually they're like, something weird doesn't compile. And that's not too bad. But if something compiles and you can ship that to your customers, uh, you know, your users, and then it just doesn't work, that's extremely bad. Um, so what was triggering this bug? Well, let's debug into this and see what's going on. So I have compiled with debug info, so I can, from this command line, type devm run kitty exe, and by the way, open up my kitty cpp, and this will launch. Uh, the IDE, even though I didn't build it in the IDE. The reason I'm doing this is because when I use Milan, I'm going to need to build in my command line. Um, so here I've got uh, my program in a nice big font. Let's debug into this find call, because everything before this is going to work fine. Uh, so let's go in, and I need to bounce. Oh, I was using raw pointer, so I don't know if you need begin end. Okay, so here is a call to std find first last, and here you can see we're in our STL internal header x utility. So after some debugging logic, uh, let us jump in and out of these helper functions. Okay, so now we're in this helper function underscore capital find. You can tell it's internal because it's ugly. Underscore capital means users can't mention this. And we've got this overload, this funny overload here, taking const sign care stars and int. You'll notice these are exactly the types um, that I specified. If I had specified any other types, um, like uh, std strings or whatever, you know, or a list of std strings, it would have gone to this uh, generic implementation above here that literally says lm equal equal val. This is always correct. This is extremely hard to screw up. But then we've got these other overloads for cons care star, cons sign care star, and cons unsigned care star. By the way, these are three distinct types in the core language. Uh, care is unique this way for all other types, like int is equal to signed int. Um, but care is actually distinct. I could go into this whole story. Um, so we've got consign care, and we've got this dedicated overload. So why are we doing this? Um, in general, we don't like having extra code in our headers uh, because it's more to maintain. It's verbose. We like to centralize things. But in this case, this implementation is trying to be tricky. It's going to call memcare, this function from the CRT. Um, and then it's going to do a bit of a dance and then return a pointer. So why are we calling memcare? Let's go over to the C standard. So memcare is this function from the C standard library, and of course it's very low level. It takes a cons void star, it takes an int, it takes a number of bytes, and it locates the first byte in this range um, that is equivalent to this other byte. The reason why this exists in the CRT, um, which has actually very few algorithms, um, is A, back then, you know, the programmers took what they could get, um, and also memcare, uh, like memcopy and memmove and a couple other functions, can actually be implemented faster in assembly um, than in just plain old C or C++. You can spam out certain assembly instructions um, that can very, very quickly on certain processors um, find a particular byte in a range uh, without writing an actual loop that the compiler has to go through. So that's why this exists. So because the CRT uh, may have, and in fact does, have a special assembly implementation of this, uh, in the STL in std find, we would like to detect when the user is giving us raw pointers to a range of bytes, either care, signed care, or unsigned care, and call memcare at compile time um, using our fancy template metaprogramming. So this is cool, except when it's not. And the bug here, is that find is specified differently than memcare. In a, aside from the fact of the return values, uh, because find and memcare disagree on what should happen when we don't find the value. We were correctly handling that. But find here is specified in terms of value equality, whether one value of this type in the range is equal equal to this other t that the user has given us. Whereas memcare in the CRT it is not specified in terms of value equality. It's specified in terms of byte equality. Um, it takes this consovoid star, um, and it's interpreting them as unsigned cares. And then it takes an int c, interprets that as an unsigned care. And it just says, hey, byte, are you equal to this other byte? Cool. Um, so these semantics are different. And our implementation, let me go here, was not correctly handling this. So here you can see. Um, with this background information. This special overload 
taking consign care star first, consign care star last, and int val passes the val directly to memcare, regardless of its actual value. So in this case, in my program here, um, the value int, and 255 is a totally cool int, um, is outside the range of signed care, which goes from negative 128 to 127 inclusive. So there's no way that it could possibly be found in this range. And yet, we were passing it directly to memcare in an attempt to be fast. Um, so this then goes for byte equality. And the byte 255, which is all one bits, FFF, um, or yeah, just two Fs, um, is equal to the byte negative one interpreted as an unsigned care. So memcare is like, hey, these are totally equal. This is an index four. And std find should say, no, these values are totally not equal. You know, um, So we should return the end iterate. So this means that we need to do something different, template meta programming wise. Um, but then the usual arithmetic conversions will step in. So let's now switch over to this Milan build I've got where we've got the fix that was checked in a couple months ago. Okay, so let's stop debugging this. Okay. And okay. So I'm still going to need this to debug. By the way, uh, here I'm including vector, but if I'm going over to the mon build, I no longer need to push back this stuff. Let me put a negative one here and uncomment this. Now you can see I can actually construct from an initializer list. Let's go to my Milan build. And I'm printing out the compiler version to make sure I'm not screwing something up. Let's compile. And awesome, we actually compiled. Um, with this initializer list. You can see in my local build, we have added initializer list constructors, just a vector, um, and the other containers. We still got to fix up a few more places. That has not yet shipped, but it will ship at some point in the unspecified future. Uh, so let's run Kitty here. Uh, you can see it's printing out my compiler version, uh, which indicates I'm running this actual correct thing. And I searched for the value 255 in a vector of sign care containing a negative 1. VC11 RTM would have said, oh, I totally found it. It's at index 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, and this current build I have says, oh, no, these values are totally different. I'm finding it not at all, and I'm going to return you a pointer to the end of the sequence at index 5. So this is correct. This is what we would like to see. And in fact, uh, I could throw any types of the range or the value here, um, and it would always get the right answer. Um, which is cool. So how do we achieve this? Did I simply rip out uh, this memcare optimization? Which I could have, and that would have restored correctness, but it would have lost our fancy optimization. And I actually did not do that. I actually uh, achieved both correctness and performance. Let's debug into this thing. Let's now use VC11RTM to debug into this executable that I built with my local Milan build. Um, so let's put a breakpoint here. And you can see I can totally debug even though I've got this init list, although if I tried to compile here, it would totally fail. Uh, OK, so put a breakpoint, and now let's step in. Okay, Now we're going to get to the usual arithmetic conversion. It's going to be fun. So here in my X utility in my local build, um, here's the external std find that the user, me, is calling. Um, I do some debugging logic, and then I jump through some wrappers. These are all doing useful things. And then here, I've got a different function, internal underscore capital find with different guts. You can see I'm doing some template metaprogramming here. So I'm going to uh, go through that pretty quickly. Uh, I'm, t I'm taking these iterators here and some value. I don't know uh, at first what the iterators are, what the value is, and I want to activate my memcare optimization under a very specific set of circumstances. And here I'm actually writing it out at compile time in code. I'm saying, OK, let's look at this iterator. And there's six iterators that I could possibly match against. I want raw pointers to either care, signed care, or unsigned care. And I don't actually uh, mind if they're const or not const. So I could specify this in a bunch of ways. I'm just going to say six different is same tests and or them together. So if my iterator is any of these, then the range coming in is bytes. And I like bytes. But I also need to look at the value. Because what if this value is something like a user-defined class that has an overloaded operator equal equal? I can't possibly feed that thing to memcare. Um, or like, what if it's a double, You know, something bizarre? Um, I only want integers as my values. So if this given tie is an integral type, then I can activate my optimization. The stars have aligned, and I know that if I do extra tests, I can actually activate my memcore optimization. 
So I'm going to use tag dispatch, um, pass this to my other helper um, to indicate should I activate the optimization or not. If this uh, logic here said no, you know, these are like list iterators or stood strings or user find classes, then I get false type. And that means I need to use the handwritten algorithm um, by the you know, standard library implementer um, saying equal equal, that's always correct and is in fact is the best we can do. However, if the stars align, then we need to be a little careful. We need to do this range check that I talked about. Okay, we're getting very close to where the usual arithmetic conversions will matter. So I've got some helper function. I haven't showed you that yet. Um, this is where the fun really happens. And I'm gonna test. Okay, given the type of the elements, um, here I'm encoding that in first, and the particular value, if that value is not within the limits of these bytes, which is either negative 128 to 127 or 0 to 255, then if value is not within that range, it cannot possibly match any of these elements. That means that I don't even need to do any comparisons. I can just return the answer in constant time and say, hey, I didn't find it last. Uh, so this is actually a, a super optimization. I got order one instead of order n. Um, that probably won't activate too often, but it's necessary in order to catch cases um, like this repro here, where the incoming value, 255, is simply outside the possible range of signed cares. So this within limit ch check will detect that. So if I verified that the element type is good, that the value type is good, and that the value is actually within the range of the elements, then the stars have aligned and I can call memcare. Um, I need to actually do a static cast here. I could go into why that's necessary. Um, then I need to static cast back out and I need to do a little dance to adapt memcare semantics of didn't find something. Um, it returns a null pointer uh, to find semantics. That part is all simple. So how is within limits implemented? This is where it gets tricky. So let's go up here. This is actually a four-way, uh, let's see, actually I can just stop debugging because I don't need any of this here. Okay, so I've got this within limits helper function um, and it's going to be passed, here we go. Uh, it, it's passed the input iterator which encodes the value type and then the actual, or the element type and then the value type that I'm looking for. So I strip off a pointer, elem is my type like signed care. And then I'm gonna ask, okay, is elem signed and is tie signed? And these are two separate things. So I've got four possible cases. Signed elements, signed uh, value type, or signed unsigned, and so forth. And then I've got this funny integral constant. So let's look at the usual arithmetic conversions now. Let me, did I stop debugging? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, so let's go to here and let's edit up a new file. Okay. So per CPP. And let's include IOStream. An O stream. So I'm just going to do a little experimentation here. Um, suppose that I've got something like assigned care uh, SC, and this is initialized to negative one, like in our repro, and then I've got an int i, and this is 255. Okay, and I would like to know include IOS using namespace stood. IOS gives me this cool thing bool alpha. So then I can print bools. So hey, is SC equal to I? We know just as programmers that this answer should be false. So if I compile static debug per and run per please. Compile this run, it says, hey, the signed care negative one is not equal to 255. So we just sort of intuitively expect this to be true. But as usual, C++ has to achieve this through rules that have no human emotion um, and no intuition. Um, they usually, but not always, do what the programmer intends. And these are controlled by the usual arithmetic conversions. Uh, one of the few phrases in C++ that is deeply scary, along with one definition rule. Um, so here we go. Um, in clause five, uh, in this case paragraph 10 in the current working paper, um, it starts off in a relatively comprehensible way. I'll just read out loud. It says many binary operators, and in this case it could be like plus or equality, um, that expect operands of arithmetic or enumeration type 
cause conversions and yield result types in a similar way. The purpose is to yield a common type, which is also the type of the result. So in this case, and this was actually inherited from C, um, what the language says is if I've got some incoming type, like assigned care and maybe an unsigned long long on the other side, um, I can't directly compare them. Um, what I need to do is I need to potentially coerce them to a single common type, which could be the same as one of the inputs or different, um, and then actually do the comparison once the types are equal. This mirrors what's happening uh, on the actual you know, machine level, the metal, um, where you're emitting an assembly instruction that just takes two registers or whatever um, and then compares them. That's working on a single type. So C and C++ are doing the same thing because they're directly emitting essentially assembly instructions. So back to the standard, it says, this pattern is called the usual arithmetic conversions. And then it's just got a bullet list. Um, so the first parts here about scope denum type uh, and then long double double float, I won't get into those. Um, those matter if you've got enumerations or floating point. Floating point itself is an area of uh, extreme frightening rules. Uh, so we get down and then it starts talking about integral promotions. So let's go back to my per. Now I'm going to get a little more fancy. Um, suppose that I've got something, okay, like uh, an unsigned care x, and let's make it big. Let's make it something like 250, and then an unsigned care y, and let's make this like 200, okay. And I would just like to print out. Here I'm using IO streams, which will automatically detect the type of the result. I just like to see x plus y. So as programmers, we expect x plus y to be 450. Now, many of us, especially if we've not stared at clause 5, can't quite express why that should be the case. But it's obvious, right? I mean, 250 plus 200 is 450. So let's compile and run this. And yeah, we get 450 printed. So that's awesome. Uh, but what if our values are slightly, or what if our types are slightly different? Okay, so let's have an unsigned long. And here, another unsigned long. Okay, and let's make this big. I'm going to print this in, uh, eh, let's see, I can, I can print it as an integer. Uh, so I want 4 billion. Okay, and I'm going to actually encode this constant as unsigned long. Unfortunately, I do not have decimal separators, so I actually need to crunch out these spaces. And let's suppose this other one here is something like 3 billion. Let's make it, eh, we can make the first one tiny. 3 billion plus 4 billion as unsigned long. So both of these numbers are within the range of an unsigned long, uh, which on our platform is 32-bit and come up to like 4.2 billion. Um, so if I add them, what should I get? Should I get 7 billion? Well, the answer is no. Let's see what this prints. Okay, so let's type per, and then compile per. And the answer is no, I do not get 7 billion. Instead, I get 2.7 billion and some change. So that's weird. Why, when I added unsigned cares, when the result 450 was outside the range of unsigned care, how come I just got that without being modified in any way? Yet when I try to add unsigned longs, here I actually wrap around and I don't get 7 billion widened to like 64 bits, I get 2.7 billion. This is kind of weird. And the answer is the usual arithmetic conversions. So let's go here uh, and see what happened for those unsigned cares when I added them. Okay, so it's got this uh, bullet points about scope denum and floating point and all of that is false, so we get down here. It says, otherwise, the integral promotions shall be performed on both operands. So that's cool if you know what integral promotions are, but say we don't, let's go to clause or section 4.5. Okay, and this whole section is dedicated to this thing called the integral promotions. And this first one is actually the important one. Um, and it's got some bit about PR values, we can just ignore that. It says a PR value of an integer type other than bool, care 16, 32, or wkrt, whose integer conversion rank is less than the rank of int. Okay, so let's stop there. What is this talking about ranks? Well, I can skip here and just tell you that anything with the rank less than int means a tiny type. That means cares, signed and unsigned, shorts, signed and unsigned, and that's it. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Uh, so any of those tiny types can be converted to a value of type int if int can represent all of the values of the source type. Otherwise, blah, 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 and that does not actually apply on VC's platforms where int can actually always represent those values. So let me sketch out something here. 
Uh, I guess I can erase this doom here. The doom is still present, I just need the space. Uh, okay, so if I've got something like an unsigned care, okay, this is a value in 0, 255 inclusive, and int on our 32-bit platform can represent negative 2 to the 31st, and then 2 to the 31st minus 1. Hopefully I'm not getting that wrong. So this is totally within this gigantic range. And if I've got signed care, which is from negative 128 to 127, again, assuming 2's complement, which is true on our platforms, totally within this range. Um, unsigned short, that's 0 to 65k, also within the range of it. Signed short from negative 32k to 32k, um, also within the range of int. So what this is saying is, unless your types are like really weird sizes and the standard is written to accommodate those platforms, um, things like cares and shorts, they just get widened to int as soon as you pass them to binary operators like addition or equality. This is very interesting. Um, and the reason why is, again, it goes back to C. Uh, if you think about, you know, back in the 70s when C was designed, you know, we're gonna emit assembly instructions and the natural width of the machine int, in those horrible days it was 16-bit, um, all the instructions are gonna work on ints anyway. So if we've got a type that's like a single byte, we may as well just widen it to int because that is what the machine is going to execute on. So this is what, this is exactly what allowed me to take an unsigned care of 250 and an unsigned care equaling 200 and add them together. And what happened is the usual arithmetic conversions said, okay, you are tiny types, you are unsigned cares, I'm going to promote you to int. So they got promoted to ints and then I add the two ints and then it's not surprising that I get 450. They do not remain unsigned cares even though they started out that way. So that is actually desirable in most cases. Um, you start with these unsigned cares and you get the value adding them preserved without wrapping around um, to something less than 255. In fact, it's so natural that we just sort of always expect it when we work with types. We, we're not constantly on our guard. Um, and so that is nice. And the thing about the usual, arithmetic, or the usual arithmetic conversions is that they often produce intuitive results, except when they don't. Um, okay, so as, otherwise the integral promotion shall be performed. So after tiny types have been widened in it, we just proceed on um, through these usual arithmetic conversions. It says, then the following rules happen. So if they both have the same type, then we're done. This is awesome. This is what happens if you like add two ints or um, add two unsigned longs or add an unsigned care and a signed short. So let me, let me walk that out on the whiteboard. So what if I've got something, and I could say static cast, blah, blah, blah. Let me just talk in terms of the types. Imagine I've got an unsigned care, and then some binary operator. It could be plus, it could be equal, equal, it could be times, whatever. Um, something like a signed short. I'm just always going to explicitly write this out. Um, even though in real code I would never say sign there, except for cares. Um, in this case, what happens is, first, the usual arithmetic conversions say, okay, you're not enums, you're not floats, okay, you get promoted. Everybody gets a promotion if you're tiny. So care gets promoted to int. Sign short gets promoted to int. And then the bullet points activate and it says, oh, these types are the same, I am just going to add them or test them for equality or multiply them uh, or whatever. So even if the types are different, after the promotions, if they're identical, then they just um, proceed on without further modification. Okay, And remember that the integral promotions, um, they preserve values because there was that standardese there about they're widened int only if int can represent all of the values. Um, but then we've got other bullet points. What if the types aren't the same even after the promotions? So then it says, otherwise, if both operands have signed types, or if they're both unsigned, then the littler one gets converted to the bigger one. So this is also kind of intuitive, and it actually produces expected results. Imagine, okay, I've, I need, now I need to have big types that won't undergo the integral promotions. Imagine I've got something like a signed long, okay, maybe say this one is negative two billion, okay, that's a totally reasonable value. And imagine that I'm also going to, say, add it to a signed long long. 
okay, whose value is something like you know, negative uh, 7 billion. Okay, I add these together. So they go through the interval promotions and this says, okay, you guys are big, so I'm not gonna promote you. Then it says, okay, are you the same? No, they're not the same. So then it hits this bullet point about if they're both signed, which they are, then the littler one gets promoted to, or sorry, gets converted, I should not say promoted, um, to the width of the larger one. So what happens here is that signed long will get converted to unsigned long long, which is 64 bit, that's value preserving, because it's just totally bigger. Um, and then they get added and we end up with negative nine billion um, as expected. So this is intuitive. If I take a signed long and I add it to a signed long long, I sort of expect I'm gonna end up with a signed 64 bit. So that's cool. But then, then the usual arithmetic conversions, sort of the clause come out. It says, okay, otherwise, if the operand that has unsigned integer type has rank greater than or equal to the rank of the other operand, then the signed one gets converted to unsigned. This is where the fun happens. Um, and then it says, otherwise, if the type of the operand with the signed integer type can represent all the values of the type of the operand with unsigned integer type, um, the unsigned one gets converted to the signed. So all these signed, unsigned, they're all flying around. It's not clear what's happening. This is scary because these conversions can transform values. And when you get a value transformation, um, that is deeply unintuitive uh, to almost all programmers. Um, in some respects, it would have been better if after the integral promotions and um, this bit about them both being signed, after all of that, if the standard sort of stopped and said, oh, otherwise you need to explicitly convert with a cast, um, you know, static cast or even a C cast, um, otherwise these types are just incompatible. Now, C and C++ didn't do that. And the reason why is, remember how C was designed? It assumed um, that the programmer knows what they're doing. Um, and it also assumed that they really, really want their code to compile. And um, they don't want to have to be very explicit about all sorts of things. That's why we've got all of these conversions. And it's great when it works. Um, the problem here, um, as you sort of work with this over time, is that it's so desperate to compile your code that when it does things like value transformations, it can actually produce unexpected results if you're not deeply familiar with the usual, usual arithmetic conversions. And by now, it's far too late to change this. I mean, if these rules were tweaked in any way, um, aside from something like adding 64-bit types according to the same conventions, um, we would just break all C and C++ code throughout the world. Um, the value of that is actually greater um, than the headache of dealing with this every once in a while. Um, so that's why the rules are the way they are. And this is also why we have compiler warnings. You will see compiler warnings about, oh, you're comparing a signed type to an unsigned type, and this could potentially do blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's why those compiler warnings exist. They can't catch all cases, but they are helpful if you've ever wondered why you've seen one of those. Uh, okay, so essentially once we get here, and the scary rules, if you just want to remember them briefly, the scary rules are when you're working with types of different signedness. Because if they're both signed, um, or they're both unsigned, then things aren't gonna go very bad. Uh, whereas if you're mixing signedness, things are crazy. Okay, so let's go back, all the way back, popping many things off the stack, to this within limits function. So that's why I'm testing is signed lm versus ins, is signed tie. I need four different cases, because what could happen if I've got a signed element versus an unsigned tie, blah, blah, blah. So I've got four overloads here. Uh, let's look at the simple ones. So I start off, lm is on the left. So imagine I've got signed elements, true, and a signed value that I'm looking for, true. Okay, in this case, if I work through all the rules, and it actually took me quite some time to look through all the possible cases and figure out exactly what could happen. In this case, there are actually no bizarre value transformations, and I just need to do two bounds checks. If this value is within the range of signed care min and signed care max, this is negative 128 to 127, um, then it could possibly match within this range and I need to return true. If it's outside that range, then I need to return false saying, hey, you know, there's no possible way this could exist. Don't call memcare, just return the last iterator. So that's cool. Um, skipping over some interesting things. Okay, um, so if I've got two unsigned values, so I've got an unsigned care as my element, and then I'm looking for an unsigned value, like another unsigned care, or an unsigned int, or an unsigned long long, if I work through all of these things, again, there's no value transformations. So all I need to do is see whether they're within bounds. I know they're both not less than zero 
because they're unsigned. I just need to do an upper bounds check. So if the value is less than or equal to 255, then okay, proceed onwards to memcare. Okay. Then things start getting trickier. Remember how I said that mixing signedness is where things start to get a little freaky. If I have an unsigned element, like an unsigned care, um, and then a signed type, uh, so I'm looking for something like int or long long or something big, what could happen? Um, so let's actually work through what the usual arithmetic conversions say. Okay, so in this case, I want to know for the purposes of within, uh, for find its equality, but the actual binary operation doesn't matter because the usual arithmetic, arithmetic conversions, that's a mouthful, um, apply to essentially most binary operators. I don't want to say all. Uh, okay, so if my element type is, now I've gotten unsigned, so I've got unsigned care. Okay, here I'm just thinking about the type. I've got this whole range, and these things are all in the range 0 to 255, but I don't know at first um, what they could possibly be. I just know the range. And then the thing that I'm looking for is signed. That's what my template metaprogramming has detected. So I've got some signed T. Okay, and T could be, it could be tiny, so I could be working with signed care, it could be signed int, it could be signed long long. All I know is that it's signed and it's integral. So I don't need to worry about like doubles or strings or anything bizarre. I want to know, is this possibly within the range here? So I would love just to be able to test um, against these two bounds. I need to see, okay, is this thing negative? If so, it can't possibly be equal to an unsigned care. Or is this thing positive? But I want to know, when I do those tests, am I going to get these bizarre transformations? So if I work through these rules, let's look at the usual arithmetic conversions now. I'm actually, there's a whole bunch of corner cases. I, I could talk for hours about this. Um, so if you see me skipping anything, um, I assure you that I have actually reasoned about all of this um, as precisely as possible when I wrote this fix. Uh, okay, scope denums, doubles. Okay, so integral promotions. The integral promotion shall be performed on both operands. So what does this do? Unsigned care is always tiny. So this will become int. This gets promoted. Okay. Then the signed t gets promoted. So we could have signed care, signed short, signed long, signed long long. And by the way, we could also have signed int, which on our platform is the same um, width as long, although it's slightly less rank. Um, these get promoted. So cares and shorts get smashed to int. So after promotion, we end up with assigned either int, long, or long, long. Okay, so that's interesting. And we know this int on this side is 0 to 255. Then we do a comparison. So, okay, after the promotions, it says, okay, if both operands have the same type, no further conversion is needed. And by the way, this one was value preserving, so this one's good. Because int can totally represent the values in 0 to 255. And the integral promotions from signed care and signed short to int, we know those are also value preserving. So we're not going to be changing any numbers. Um, the, the other thing that I've been sort of assuming without explicitly mentioning it, that's probably a good thing to mention. Um, it is really, really important in C and C++ to distinguish between values and representations. So a value is just a number. It's a mathematical number, like 5 or negative 127. It's a number. Um, a representation is a bunch of bits. Uh, and that's because we're working on computers um, whose states are signaled by electrons versus not electrons. So that's why we've got, we've got to need to represent things with bit patterns. Uh, for unsigned, it's very simple to see. For signed numbers, everybody uses two's complement by now, even though the standard says you've got a couple other possibilities. These things are distinct, and I'm, I keep mentioning value preserving. So when we convert types, if it's value preserving, that means five as a signed care will be preserved five as a signed long or long long or whatever, um, even though a signed care is only eight bits wide and a signed long long is 64 bits wide. So different representation, but the same value. Whereas if I get a value transformation, that means that in addition to messing with the width of the bits or whatever, um, or the meaning of the sign bit, I'm also changing the value that it represents from say negative one to four billion. That's a value transformation.
So value preserving on this side, and then when I promoted these, this was also value preserving if it happened, otherwise I didn't even mess with the type. So, so far we're good. Okay, so if they both have the same type, no further conversion is needed. So if the, si the one on this side was assigned care, assigned short, or assigned int, then these all get smashed to int, that's the same here, and we directly compare them. Nothing crazy happened, no value transformations. Otherwise, if both operands have signed integer types, the one that's tinier gets converted to the one that's bigger. So that happens if the one on the right is either signed long or signed long long. In that case, the signed int gets widened to potentially long or long long, which 32 or 64. Um, and that, again, is value preserving. So this is good. This means the stars have a line, they've smiled on us, and even though the types here are different and we had to work through a bunch of rules, Nothing bizarre is happening. So that's why, um, if I debug in here, I can just do two comparisons. I compare my value, which is one of these things, against the constant zero and you care max, seeing, okay, is this value less than zero? Oh, you can't possibly match an unsigned care. Are you bigger than 255? Again, you cannot possibly match. And I know um, that when I compare this signed value against these constants, these comparisons themselves will not behave bizarrely. Um, Okay, so now let's get into the extremely fun case. Here we go. Okay, so the case here, um, which is actually suspiciously similar to the one that prompted the bug. Out of four cases, only one is special, is when I've got a signed element. So I've got a signed care. Okay, and then I've got an unsigned type. Okay. Again, this could be care, short, long, or long, long, but they're all unsigned. Okay. So my signed care, I know I'm in the value range negative 128 to 127. Okay. And we know the integral promotions will immediately promote this on site to int in a value, transform, uh, value preserving way. So that's cool. And then unsigned t. So what happens if I compare, and here I've got actually a subcase, what if I've got unsigned care? This is getting tiny, or unsigned short. Okay. So these get promoted because they're tiny to int. Value preserving. And then we just compare them. Okay. So this is this is normal. We would see that something like 255 is not equal to any number in this range because this one gets widened, this one gets widened to int, and then in ints we can totally compare such tiny numbers and nothing bizarre happens. Same with shorts. So in this case, um, and I actually detect with the static cast, I'll get into what this is really doing in this other one. Um, what do I need to do? So I know this unsigned value, it's unsigned, so it's certainly gonna start at zero, but I don't know how big it is, because I have not actually detected whether it's care or short. Um, so I need, I know it can't possibly be too negative. That's easy, this one falls in the middle. But I do need to test, is it too big? Is it like 255 or, you know, even 150 would be too big. So I need to do a single test to see, okay, is the value less than or equal to 127? If so, I'm within bounds. But then why do I have got this other thing here? I had mentioned at the beginning, okay, I've got a possibly signed or unsigned element. I've got, got a possibly signed or unsigned value that I'm looking for. That should be four possible cases. Yet I've got five overloads of within limits. What is going on here? This is where the usual arithmetic conversions get extremely fun. Okay, so, let me erase this. Okay. So, what if I've got an unsigned t here? Again, I've got signed care on this side. What if I've got what if I've got an unsigned t that's unsigned int or long or especially long long? These are huge, huge types, like 64 bits. That's enormous. Who could ever need more than 64 bits? Okay. What goes on here? Let's look at the usual arithmetic conversions, although you can see from this overloads I'm definitely doing something interesting. Okay. Not enum, not floating, integral promotions. Signed care, promoted to int, value preserving, good. This other thing is unsigned int, unsigned long, or unsigned long long. That's bigger than int. So it is not going to get promoted. We don't mess with it at all. Okay, so next bullet point. If they both have the same type, we're done. But they're different. This is signed int, and whatever this is, it's unsigned int long or long long. Totally different types. So this bullet point does not activate. Next bullet point, otherwise if they're both signed or both unsigned, no, this one is signed int and this one is unsigned something. Next bullet point, 
Okay, so here it says, otherwise, if the operand that has unsigned integer type, so that means this one on the right hand side, notice how um, the usual arithmetic conversions are specified just in terms of the types, uh, the left and the right are not special. The only reason I'm distinguishing left and right here is because of how std find operates, where the element is always on the left and the value is always on the right. But if the sides were reversed, the conditions would be exactly the same. Okay, so if this unsigned type has rank greater than or equal to the rank of the type of the other operand, then blah, blah, blah. So is this true? Yes, it is, because the rank here this thing is either unsigned int, unsigned long, or unsigned long long. These things are all equal to or bigger than um, this int here. So this bullet point does activate, okay? And it says, the operand with signed integer type, so that means this one, is converted, uh, shall be converted, to the type of the operand with unsigned integer type. So it's saying in this case, the programmer, and this goes all the way back to C, if the programmer is starting with a signed care on the left and they've got an unsigned int, unsigned long, or unsigned long long on the right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote to int, then I'm going to convert this to the type of the other operand and then actually do the comparison. So what does this do? Okay, if my signed care is in the range from 0 to 127, okay, then when we convert int to unsigned int, unsigned long, or unsigned long long, this is value preserving. This is an unsigned thing, it's a whole bunch of bits, we fill in a bunch of zeros, and then we copy the int here, and we're done. So 0, 127 gets mapped, now thinking just in terms of values, to 0, 127. Okay, that's cool. But what if, I'm going to red here, actually I can erase this, what if the value on this side starts off being anywhere from negative 128 to negative 1? Okay, these things are all negative. These values cannot be represented as an unsigned anything. So if I do such a conversion, I must get a value transformation. And in a two's complement world, which is what our world is um, on VC and essentially all other platforms, this is bit pattern preserving, although not value preserving. So, for example, negative 1 here gets mapped to f, 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 blah, 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 8 f's. Um, so all 1 bits as an int or a long or long long. So 8 f's or 16 f's. That sounds right. Um, and negative 128 would get mapped to f, f, blah, 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 8, 0 in hexadecimal. So this is the same bit pattern if you look up Wikipedia how two's complement works. Um, but these are totally different values. What this is saying is you take a negative one as a signed care, promoted int, and then converted to this unsigned thing. And the value negative one gets changed into either 4 billion or 18, however many quadrillion it is, 2 to the 64. Um, or slightly less if it started off being like negative 127. So that is, that is interesting. What does this mean? Well, let's look at here, okay? So we know that these values will be warped over. Let me go to my little example here where we can test out things, okay? This is deeply, deeply surprising. So if we didn't know this, we might be tempted to say, oh, we can just do the same thing. We know that an unsigned value is gonna be zero or bigger. So we just need to compare this thing and see is it less than or equal to 127 and if so, you're within a range and you're good. Because I know that if you're larger, this unsigned value, if you're larger than 127, you cannot possibly match. Yet, there's this whole thing going on with negative numbers here. What does that mean? So imagine, this is an exception to the rule that I've been using everywhere else um, because of the usual arithmetic conversions. Imagine I start with the signed care, SC, and let's say it's negative one. And then let's start with an unsigned long long. Let's just really emphasize how big it is. Eh, unsigned long is fine. Uh, UL. Okay, how big is this going to be? OX, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, unsigned long, semi. There's rules about what happens if you omit the suffix here. I can never remember them. I always slam on UL um, if I want to know. Okay, so. Is the signed care negative one equal to the unsigned long uh, two to the 32 minus one? So let's see, is SC equal to UL? Let's save and compile. 
and run. Needless to say, even though I'm using um, Milan here, this is the same in all VCs forever. Um, first, I get a warning. It says, hey, signed unsigned mismatch. Something funny might be happening here. Then it tells me, oh, negative one is equal to four billion, blah, blah, blah. So that's funny. Why did that happen? It's because of the usual arithmetic conversions. Negative one promoted to from signed care to int got slammed over to an unsigned long and that changed its value while preserving its bits. And then the after all of this conversion, negative one became FFFFF and that's equal to FFFFF on the right hand side. So that's interesting. Going back to find, which is what I'm really interested in, this means I need a very special test in addition to a compile time test. So here I've got the range of possible values, negative 128, 127, okay? And then I've got an unsigned T. Okay, the question I wanna ask is, could this T possibly match a signed care over on this side, promoted to int? So, if my value is uh, in the range zero to 127 here, this could possibly match. Zero to 127 matches this half of the range. That's cool. 28, negative one, and zero, 127. So if this thing on the right is in zero to 127, then it could match. I don't know if it will based on the elements, but if it does, uh, or if it could, then I need to actually call memcare. Also, if the thing over here, which is unsigned, so it's just unsigned, you know, I'm gonna write it out as hexadecimal. If this is huge, if it's in the range FF80 to FF all Fs, so the biggest possible number is an unsigned, then working through the usual arithmetic conversions, these enormous, enormous values will actually match the tiny numbers negative 128 to negative one. So I actually need two tests and not just a single, am I within a single range? I need a split test. I need to see, okay, unsigned T. Are you super duper tiny or are you super duper huge? And if so, you could actually match over here. Otherwise, I would get answers wrong because remember how find is specified. It says, if I went back to find, it's specified in terms of equality. So if the usual arithmetic conversions say that negative one signed care is equal to FFFFF unsigned long, stood find had also better agree with this interpretation even if I'm calling memcare. So going back to this implementation, um, if the stars aligned, I'll show you how I did that, um, then I need a two part test with an or. I'm saying, okay, if the value here, this unsigned thing that's big, if it's less than or equal to 127, then I know I'm in this half of the range and things are cool. Or if I'm enormous, if um, signed care min, so this is negative 128, cast over to FFF80 with the static cast. If Val is even bigger than that, then I know I'm in this upper half and I'm gonna be equal. So that's what this is testing. And how did I get here? Uh, remember how I said that this case only activates when the T is big because that prevents it, um, this T from going through the integral promotions. Um, I could have explicitly encoded unsigned care and unsigned short for special treatment versus unsigned, in, unsigned long and unsigned long long. But instead, I wrote a simpler test uh, in my helper here. I said, okay, let's call this helper within limits, give it the value, tell it is the element signed, tell it is the type signed, and then for this very special thing, um, I can detect when this will happen, possibly happen with this uh, value transformation here, if negative one as a signed care promoted in, so I could just say int, is equal to FFFF as an unsigned T. Okay, so the question I want to ask, is negative one the int? I don't need to say signed care because that would just get promoted on site. Is this, would this be equal to negative one static cast to tie, which is unsigned? So this would be FFF enormous. Sometimes this is false. This is false when this type here is small, like unsigned care or unsigned short. But if it's big, then stepping out at a high level, the usual arithmetic conversions say this thing is so large, it sort of has a gravitational pull and it's going to coerce the other type, um, the integer, the signed integer, um, to be converted to an unsigned large type. Um, so when this is true, then I need this special split to part test. And with all of this logic, and look what, look what happened here. Um, I've got my 
stood find here, it's got some debug checking, and then it calls this internal helper. It's got some metaprogramming here to see, okay, is the element type and the value type I'm looking for um, eligible for the memcare optimization? If so, then let's call this one here, otherwise go back to the generic algorithm. And then within the memcare optimization one, do this limits test, and that does four possible combinations of signed versus unsigned, and then add a fifth one for when the large right-hand side could cause a value transforming conversion in the usual arithmetic conversions. So five overloads of within limits. Um, then uh, do a value test, and then if it's possibly within range, um, call memcare, adapt, and blah, blah, blah. All of this is necessary for both correctness and performance. Oh, and by the way, integral, um, uh, integral types include bools. Yeah, you can totally pass a bool to find within um, uh, and look for something in a uh, range of unsigned care or short. Um, this triggered compiler warnings um, that I could have worked around, but it was easier uh, just to add a overload um, for bool and just say, oh, bool, which is zero or one, um, interpreted as an integer. That's always within the range of a signed care or unsigned care. So that's why I've actually got the sixth overload that's not super important. Um, that's what all of this machinery is doing, and it exists to work around, essentially, um, the behavior of the usual arithmetic conversions. And this is necessary to adapt stood-fine semantics um, over to memcare semantics, which is potentially faster than the core language. So, what does this mean? What does this mean for you? Because you're probably not implementing stood find yourself. Um, what this means is that if you're not concerned uh, about correctness in all possible cases, you usually don't have to worry about this stuff. Because if you're working with reasonably sized types um, and you're not mixing like signed and unsigned, everything essentially works. Um, this is why this doesn't blow up for programmers on day one. However, as soon as you start mixing signed and unsigned types especially, or if, like StudFind, you're implementing a generic algorithm um, that is going to you know, modify, work with integral types, and potentially convert them or compare them or you know, add them together, um, if they could trigger the usual arithmetic conversions, you really should know these rules. Um, because the promotion, they preserve value, and the thing about widening types of the same sign, that preserves value. But as soon as the usual arithmetic conversion say, okay, I am so desperate to compile this code, I need to convert unsigned to signed or signed to unsigned, that could potentially modify values. Um, both directions can modify values, because converting large unsigned numbers to signed numbers, um, that could actually produce negative values. I think that's actually implementation defined. Um, but on a two's complement machine, uh, that's what'll happen. And vice versa, we saw here, converting a negative number to unsigned, that can change a negative number to an extremely large unsigned number, and that is often unexpected. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're aware of this stuff, um, then when you start writing code that could potentially trigger this stuff, you'll hopefully remember it and then take uh, care to either work around it by maybe casting the values, um, Remember, casts are dangerous, but if you know what they're doing, they're useful um, to silence compiler warnings. Um, or work around it, um, in, uh, just completely avoid it by starting with types that are the same signedness or the same width. Because remember, if the types coming in are both identical, then you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Because the usual arith arithmetic conversions say, oh, after promotion, if they're identical, hey, I'm done. Um, it's only when you start mixing types of different widths and especially different signedness that these interesting rules um, come into play. Um, and these exist, you know, for C compatibility, um, and they're they're good, um, but they are occasionally a source of headaches, as you can see uh, in this sort of code. Uh, so that was uh, part seven, um, and uh, like I mentioned, this uh, initializer list aware libraries will be coming to you at some point in the future. Can't say when yet. Um, so let me know in the comments if you have, if you have questions um, about the usual arithmetic conversions or anything else you'd like to see. Uh, until then, see ya.